So I got this email from a marketing agency asking me to complete this test and create a three to six month marketing strategy for the brand. And today I'm gonna walk you through my thought process on how I would do this and how I would structure it. And hopefully it'll be pretty informative and you'll learn something. So the first thing we need to do is actually choose between these two brands here, Sola and Fabulish. I'm gonna pull these websites up right now. Sola seems to be selling these uh, these buns and like bagel bites and granola, which is kind of cool. And then Fabulish is selling these plant-based uh, chickpea dips and uh, falafel items. It's, it's really interesting actually. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually choose the brand that I think has the best long-term play on digital. I did forget to mention this at the start of the video. This is for a digital marketing role. So everything that we're going to be putting into this document and sending over needs to have that in mind. One of the first things I'll do is actually take a look at the average order value for these brands. Now it can be a little bit difficult to figure that out, especially when you don't have the backend Shopify data. But what you can do is try and estimate it based on the price points listed on the website. So if we scroll down here on Fabulous, we can see that they're selling these sauces for around 10 bucks a pop here. And then they also have some bundles, which is really nice to see for between 65 and $75. If we go over to Sola Sweet, we can go to their bread loaves and buns here. And there's not a whole lot we can really do in terms of combos or basically getting it to a point where we can run front end traffic through paid ads profitably. If you think about it in the back of your head, it's going to be really difficult to go on Facebook or Snapchat or TikTok or Google, whatever traffic source that you'd like. It's going to be difficult to make profitable returns if you're leading traffic to a landing page that has a $6 item. It's gonna be really difficult. Ideally, you want medium to high ticket items to run paid traffic to. Anything above $30 is the bare minimum that I would suggest. So with that in mind, we're going to discount Sola as a potential opportunity to run a marketing strategy for, and we're gonna go directly into Fabulous just because of those bundles. But as a side note, I actually like the product selection on this brand a little bit more as well. So one of the first things I like to do is figure out what ads that they're already running. And you can do this by scrolling to the bottom of a website and then going and opening their Facebook page. And this is gonna give us a lot of detail and insight into the brand. We're gonna scroll down here and go to the page transparency, but if we do notice on the Facebook shop section, look at the average order value for all of these items. This is going to be very easy to sell with paid traffic. 50 bucks, 40 bucks, 67 bucks, bundles, that is what we want. Like I said, let's go to page transparency, see all, and then go to ad library. This is going to show us all of the ads that a brand is currently running. So it looks like on their ads library right now, we have basically one goal and it's leading people to an investment site, which is something I didn't really expect to see. If I'm being honest, I thought we would be leading to a product page on site somewhere, but it seems to be working for them. They have $383,057 raised from 240 investors. I'm actually going to go ahead and watch this video to see if there's any little tidbits of information that I can gather that will help me create a marketing strategy for them. Okay, so it looks like just based on this, the video is a little bit older than I would have expected. The time of recording this video, it's early 2022. So it looks like they were maybe making this video at the end of 2020, which is completely fine. But I like to take a look at these growth sections if they're available online to get a projected estimate of what actual monthly ad spend will be. Now, if we go back to the marketing assignment slash test, we see we have a $120,000 budget per quarter. Poor per quarter, and uh, that equates to around 40K every single month. Ideally though, we would want to be spending a little bit more if they have hefty goals. I think for 2022, uh, the projected sheet at the bottom here, they wanted 3 million revenue, but that would mean that you'd have to get around $250,000 coming in every single month in terms of direct revenue. Now, there is something mentioned here as well where it had 50% of the total revenue for the business coming from repeat purchasers. And that is amazing. And I mean like, really, really good. If you can get your e-commerce business to a point where the majority of your sales are coming in from purchasers that have already placed an order on your site, that is 
huge. And that's gonna be really good when you want to sell the business later because it's consistent, reliable, monthly recurring revenue coming in. And yep, here we can see the timeline. 2022 is 3 million projected and 2023 is 6 million projected. Another chart for the growth projections down here. Now that we've actually watched this video and taken a look at some of their press release coverage and footage, we can start to put together a marketing plan that starts to emulate their goals. The first thing that I put here at the top is the brand that we're working with and then also some general notes. So we have 50% of revenue is generated from repeat business, which is always nice to know and have. They expected 1 million in 2021, so that's what we're currently dealing with in terms of revenue and it's based on the chickpea plant, which is nice to know when we're writing things like ad copy and designing creatives. Now the section under here for Amazon is really interesting. I did a ton of math here just to see if there was any kind of extraneous data that I could find that would help me put together a plan. I'm gonna go to their website here, go to their Instagram, and then go to their link tree from their Instagram bio. Always try and check out a brand's social media if you can and have that available to you. There is usually some little tidbits of information that you wouldn't find elsewhere. Going to Linktree here, we're gonna pull up their Amazon and we'll see some of the basic data here. They're currently selling three different SKUs here. They have the falafel pack, they have this dip, and then they have the bundle here for 45, which is interesting. Going back to our assignment here, we did a little bit of math. The average Amazon review rate, meaning if a customer purchases something on Amazon, there is between a 0.5% and 3% chance to leave a review. So for the purposes of all the equations below, we're going to assume that on average, 2% of all customers left a review. Going back to Amazon, we can see the specific review counts in the number section at the top. It's rated 4.5 out of five stars, but there's a total of 39 reviews on this product, 25 on this one, and 68 for the bundle. So now that we've established an average global review ratio, we can figure out, roughly speaking, how many orders each listing has actually had. So for the falafel, they had a total of 39 reviews, and that is 2% of 1,950 which is the total estimated orders here, which equates to around 29.54% of all of their Amazon orders. For the dip, there were 25 reviews, which is 2% of 1250, which equates to 18.93% of all Amazon orders. And then for the bundle with 68 reviews, there was 2% of 3,400 for the total estimated orders, and that equated to around 51.51% of all of the Amazon orders. Now, if you take 1950 total orders by the $37 price point, you get 72 grand for the falafel roughly. For the dip, it's 1250 times 35, which is around 43 grand. And for the bundle, 3,400 total orders times $45 for the average price, and that's around $153,000. All of the data meshed up together, we have around 6,600 orders and around $270,000 just from the Amazon surface. Also, if my voice is starting to fall apart, I apologize. I just have some kind of lung problem right now. It sucks, but we'll try and work through it. With all of that in mind, we can start to bring together a marketing strategy. So we'll go to the slide below with the paid social content and the constants being a 40K a month ad spend budget, 120 grand a quarter according to the test restrictions. Success is around $250,000 in monthly revenue to hit that $3 million annual goal for 2022. We'll accomplish this by acquiring as many new customers as possible, playing to the excellent repurchase rate. If we can get one customer to come to the website and make a purchase, there's over a 50% chance that they're going to make another purchase with the business in the future, which is incredible. <coughs> one quick note on the paid social strategy before we begin on the slide is that I'm going to refer to this as Facebook and Instagram because that is going to be the primary channel where almost all of the traffic is going to be driven for paid social. And as a side note, this position that I applied for it's a paid social position, so that's what we'll focus on for this test. Our KPIs, or key performance indicators for another way to say that, is our blended MER, or marketing efficiency ratio, which is all revenue divided by all ad spend. Watch this video if you wanna learn how to do that for your business. Blended cost per acquisition, and then in-platform return on ad spend and cost per acquisition. For top of funnel testing, we're gonna do around $32,500 a month, which is around an 18 
percent ratio for remarketing, which is at seven and a half thousand dollars a month. This is a really important thing to mention as well, specifically when it relates to paid socials. Ideally, you want to keep your remarketing budget below 20%, especially after the iOS 14.5 changes. There's just not as many people in that audience pool to pull from and results tend to just not be as good as they used to be because of that. We're gonna allocate more spend to top of funnel, which follows our goal for success anyway, because the main point of contention here is to get as many new customers into the business funnel as possible. In terms of the specific audiences that we'll be using in top of funnel and bottom of funnel, for top of funnel, we're gonna be using broad, lookalikes and interest groups, and then for bottom funnel, social engagers, site visitors, view content, add to cart, and initiate checkout. All of those bundled into a specific ad set for bottom of funnel. And then finally for exclusions, we're going to exclude email buyers, 30 day purchasers, 30 day site visitors for all of our ads. And the reason we do this is because it's not efficient to spend money to acquire a customer that would otherwise purchase via email, SMS or other backend tools for our websites. And then also it doesn't make sense to remarket to the same person that's already shown to purchase anyway, even if they haven't purchased on email or SMS. The one caveat to that is the 30 day site visitors, which we will not exclude from bottom of funnel because that's an actual audience we'll be remarketing to. Moving on to the ad copy. Now I literally just finished writing all of this. For top of funnel, we want to be more attention grabbing and scroll stoppy. That's not a word, but you, you know, you get the point. We want to grab attention and the best way to do that is to include some kind of wacky things and wacky terms in there. For the body copy, try the hottest new dips recognized by top food critics across the globe. I took this directly from one of their original ads. It was in the middle of the body copy and I thought that it added great social proof. With allergen-free ingredients, that plays to a potential pain point or objection that a customer could have should they have allergens to standard dips. Based on the chickpea plant, you'd never know it's way healthier than some name brand dips by the taste. And we're directly calling out from like Tostino's. I know they have a ton of dips. I know Taco Bell has some dips now as well. The stuff that the market would generally be used to seeing, we're calling those out directly by saying that our dips are healthier and they taste amazing. We're also going to include all of the savory flavors here. I like to use adjectives to really push home the imagery and, and to get people to figure out exactly what it's gonna taste like in their minds. We have ranch, tzatziki, queso, and faba dip. Those are the four dip flavors. Get yours at fabulish.com. Simple, sweet call to action, that's all you need. For the headline, arguably the more important part of the copy, what do you dip with? This will get you kind of questioning yourself. If you like to eat chips with dip, what do I use for my dip? Or if I don't use dip, why don't I? Adding a little emoji next to it, the cookie emoji. I'm sure there's something that's probably a little bit better than that, but I thought that it represented a biscuit or chip good enough and I couldn't find one directly for either of those two. So we're gonna leave it at that. For bottom of funnel, it's more important to kind of drive home the benefits of the product. So testimonials are a great way to do this. I took this directly from the website. Quote, not kidding, I can't even pick a favorite. They are all so good, so smooth and creamy, bursting with so much flavor, each one so versatile. I have used on my steamed broccoli, tofu scramble, veggies, salad. The possibilities are endless. Get some. Natalie T five stars, utilizing the emoji for two reasons. One, because the stars show the review star, which is what people are used to seeing from testimonials and reviews, but also the actual emojis play to the brand vibe a little bit better. If you just take a look at the website and try and match the brand tone from the AdSense, utilizing colorful emojis is going to work well here. Now for the headline, again, arguably the more important piece, the dip you never knew you needed. Now this is gonna play to two different kinds of people. It's gonna play to the people that never have really tried dip for their chips, biscuits, whatever it is, or other ingredients or cooking recipes. And then it's also going to play to the people that do use dips and stuff like this regularly or similar products, but it'll play to the, well, I haven't tried this and people are saying it's amazing, so why don't I figure it out and see if I like it myself? Again, we're using this little cookie emoji. There might be something better out there. I just threw it on there for the time being. If you found something useful in this video, please drop a like rating down below. It really does help the YouTube algorithm push these videos out. And then please <coughs> wish me luck with my lungs. They're just not working properly for some reason. Until next time, take care. Cheers.